Well, um, for those of you who don't know, hi, I'm Ian the Green. Um, I've been, uh, I've lived in four different SCA kingdoms. I've been making different kinds of inks for about 14 years. I hold a, a grant of Arms Level Arts and Sciences Award for ink making, scribal stuff, research and teaching. Um, we're gonna do a quick outline, um, basic introduction. Uh, if anybody has questions up front, um, I'll give you a moment to think about those and then I'll, I'll take them. Um, if you ask the questions up front, um, I can tailor things a little bit better uh, and I can answer some of the questions as we move along as it would come up. Uh, we're going to talk about what is Brazil wood. We're going to talk about what is Brazil wood ink, uh, what ingredients that, that are used for Brazil wood ink. Um, I, uh, we're going to watch a process video for making it. Um, it is 9 p.m. where I am at. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to go out in the dark and make Brazil wood ink and get attacked by all the bugs. Um, um, we're going to discuss other recipes and processes. And then if there are any unanswered questions that are then, uh, and if there's any up, uh, time we'll, uh, left, we will allow for open discussion and more questions. I like questions. I'm that kind of instructor. All right. So do we have any questions up front at the moment? Nope, nothing's on chat, so you look all good. All right, we'll go ahead and move on. Uh, and as all, like I said, feel free to ask throughout the class as well. Okay, first things, what is Brazil wood ink? Uh, Brazil wood ink is a red ink that was made and used in, Medi uh, in the medieval and Renaissance manuscripts. Um, uses included drawing the lines uh, to write between and also for rubrication. Rubrication is the red letter or writing that's designed to draw the reader's eyes to important information or parts of the page. Uh, sometimes it was entire words, sometimes it really was just a letter. Um, here we have a manuscript where we see um, some rubrication that's going on with that. We have it here, 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 and here, and these are entire words of rubrication. Um, Ian, we're not seeing your, um, what your trying to describe. Interesting. There we go. Okay. Hmm. Well, we'll just move this way. Thank you for letting me know. So uh, we have the rubrication here. It's pretty much all the red letters. Um, and uh, you may have heard of a red letter day. Quite honestly, uh, calendars had the red letters and that's what the red letter days were for, was for saints days, which are feast days. Um, Next slide. Brazil would itself um, in period, they didn't really know where it came from. They had a lot of different opinions on where it came from when it was, when it was in Europe. Um, but Brazil would is uh, ink, it, it's, uh, it's from the Castle of family. Um, there are many kinds of different trees, uh, like just like oak trees, there's a lot of different kinds of them. Um, originally, uh, this wood and dye stuff was imported from India or near there. Um, they had a lot of different, like I said, they, they made a lot of claims about where it came from. Uh, when the New World was discovered, um, an abundant source was found in Latin America, so much so that one area became known as Brazil. The country is named after the wood. Pretty fun stuff. Um, in its natural state, Brazil wood is considered light brownish red, not unlike natural mahogany. Uh, in the Middle Ages, it was always sold in blocks and the craftsmen had to reduce the solid wood to a powder somehow. Um, that comes from D.V. Thompson. Uh, in his materials, techniques, and medieval painting. Um, I will quibble with him a little bit. Um, it, uh, it doesn't always show up to be a brownish red. If you have it in um, a shredded form or in a powder form, then yeah, it's going to be brownish red. But um, if you get it in a block, it's going to be mostly brown. Um, if you get it wet, then it'll look brownish red. Um, we're going to have a bunch of different ingredients that uh, are going to show up for um, Brazil wood ink. Um, I reviewed and indexed about 40 different pre-1600 recipes for Brazil wood ink. Um, each ingredient below was found in at least one recipe. It's a rabbit hole and I'm an ink geek. <laughs> um, so some of the dry ingredients, you'll get alum, uh, Brazil wood finely done, Brazil wood brass beans, and Brazil wood shavings. So si basically what you do, what what those are different sizes of the wood that you're going to be working with. And uh, in modern chemistry, the, the altruism is the more surface area, the more reaction. 
Um, the finer and smaller your Brazil wood pieces, the easier it is to be to uh, extract uh, what we're, the, the chemicals that we're looking for in the Brazil wood. Um, and so the recipe is going to tell you different things based on the sizes. Chalk, um, any calcium carbonate will work. Gum, which is not always gum Arabic. Gum could have been um, any tree sap that is a gum. So pear tree, apple tree, even cherry trees, basically any tree that gave you a gum sap, they would use. Gum Arabic was preferred. Um, and one of them actually does say gum of a cherry tree. Uh, lye, quick lime, rock alum, and even turpentine in one of the recipes. For wet ingredients, we see beer, clean glue, glare, gum water, new glue, urine, vinegar, water, white of egg, and wine. Um, with the white of egg, it's not the same as glare, but you'll see it in the recipe, they process it and it kind of becomes a glare. It's interesting how they work with it. Um, any questions at the moment? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. You're still all good. All right, thank you. All right, so uh, the video that we're gonna watch, um, here's a direct link to it if you want it. Um, I'm gonna be using mine. So we're going to stop sharing this and then we're gonna start sharing, hopefully this other one. If I can pull it up the right way. <laughs> um, the video is like I said, 27 minutes long. I will be able to hear you. Uh, while it's running, so if you have questions, I'll be happy to pause the video. Board in the green, and I would like to invite you to join me in a journey into making red Brazil wood ink. The red inks were used in the Middle Ages and Renaissance to draw the reader's eye to important parts of the page. This is called rubrication. Brazil wood was used to make one of the red inks used for lubrication. First things first, if you're going to make Brazil wood ink, you're going to need to get yourself some Brazil wood. This here is Brazil wood sawdust. Some people use Brazil wood chips. Those are just fine too. The dye we're trying to extract from the Brazil wood is called Brazilin. Brazilin is an acid base indicator. The recipe that I'm using calls for soaking the Brazil wood overnight. Brazil wood is rather finicky, so I recommend using a non-reactive bowl to do this. The recipe calls for a new pot. I'm using plastic mixing bowl. What liquid do we soak the Brazil wood in? The recipe says you can use beer, wine, vinegar. I have chosen to use store-bought white. I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on with my audio, with my speaker, but I can now hear you. I couldn't hear you before. Oh, uh, someone's saying that they're not seeing a link for the video in the chat. Is the link up on the website? Um, the link was in uh, the slideshow that I had. Um, and if you want, I can go ahead and share a link in the chat, hopefully. Uh, someone's for... beaten us to it. Okay, excellent. So, um, is the video working? Yes, it is. All right, excellent. All right, I, any other questions? Okay, I will go ahead and continue. White vinegar. It is cheaper than the other ingredients, and I can honestly say no alcoholic beverages were abused in the making of this ink or video. Because Brazil wood is rather finicky, I strongly recommend using a dedicated soaking bowl or pot. Label it so it can't be mistakenly used for something else. So here we go, a container for soaking the Brazil wood overnight. As you might be able to see, that is one quart of vinegar. Now, the directions say one third of a quart of vinegar per one ounce of Brazil wood. That's not one ounce of Brazil wood, that's three ounces of Brazil wood. So three ounces of Brazil would take one quart of vinegar. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. By the way, it is often a good idea to wear a mask. You don't have to, 
but then you don't get to breathe. Okay, this is where I get to correct myself. It works better if you pour liquids into dry. Then you don't have that problem. Anyway, continuing on. Soaking your Brazil wood overnight in vinegar makes the solution turn yellow. Pouring the Brazil wood that was soaked overnight into the pot where it can be boiled this morning. Now I'm going to need to get all of that out of there into here. And so there we are outside boiling Brazil wood on a camp stove. Um, inside it's probably not doing much yet. It's only been boiling for about a minute or two. Thus I can grab this safely without too much heat. You can see just the start of bubbles. Not too much going on. But the reason I'm doing this outside is that I am literally boiling vinegar and Brazil wood. And well, that creates quite a smell. But also keep in mind, vinegar is an acid. And when you boil it, it's going to go in, it's going to turn to vapors into the air, and then people breathe that in. Oh, I have asthma and my daughter has asthma. We don't want to be breathing in vapors of acid. All right, now we're starting to get more activity. That's great. The recipe from the Book of Secrets, uh, 1596, uh, sold under the sign of the gun, translated by a guy named Guy. Uh, well, it has to boil down to half. And well, that's gonna be a while. All right, so my alum is ready to get put in, and we're gonna go ahead and put that in. Hopefully we'll be able to catch all this. Steam is not always a good thing when you're trying to video. All right, in the alum goes. And it instantly changes the Brazil wood to red. You can see that. And you can see how the bubbles are changing, and all of a sudden it looks like it's going to a roiling boil. I, I haven't changed a thing, except I added an alum. The heat source is still steady. <coughs> the vinegar is still coming off. Um, occasionally you still get a whiff, even in an open area. But yeah, now you have a nice deep red. Again, this needs to keep boiling down uh, until about half. We're starting to see where that top level used to be, and that we're starting to get lower than that already. So I paused the video. The reason that it goes to a roiling boil is the alum just drops the boiling temperature. Um, and so that's why you get an increase in the, in, in the boiling activity. So, so Ian, before you move on, um, the recipe called for two pennies worth of, of alum. How did, yes. what did you, how did you redact that? Um, I show that in the recipe that's going to be showing up at the end. Um, there's a lot of wonder about, did he mean a pennies, uh, uh, when you, the, the amount of alum that you buy for a penny, um, or did they mean the, the measurement uh, weight of, of, of a penny worth? Um, uh, okay. And I went with the weight measurement of penny worth. Um, and off the top of my head, I don't remember exactly what that is. I think it's 1.5 grams. Um, but we'll see that at the end recipe. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. So this is the kind of alum that you want to use, uh, very specifically um, aluminum alum. Uh, so potassium aluminum sulfate with 12 H2O attached. It makes it the crystal structure. Um, it's important to use this kind of alum because the other kinds of alums either don't work or don't work as well. This alum, however, was actually uh, processed and made for me uh, by the Honorable Lord Nighthawk uh, in the Middle Kingdom. So thank you very much, Nighthawk, still using it. Uh, the container, as you can see, has a hole in it, folks, uh, and that just recently happened. So yes, I need to get a new container for We are at about 15 to 20 minutes now. As you can see, uh, it has definitely been boiled down some. Uh, we need to go down maybe about another half inch before we get to half. But remember, we started this recipe with a full quart of vinegar. Some of that, of course, did get absorbed into the Brazil wood. But when I boil this down, I need to get down to 
about a pint, a little bit less. As you can see, this is a very low boil, but I don't know if you'll be able to catch it or not. Um, even at a low boil, you're still going to have stuff that bounces up and out. Um, I haven't actually spilled any ink at this point. Don't worry, I will. Um, but there are still splotches that are happening <coughs> because this is getting boiled out. You know, low boil, but you're still getting the drops that pop up. So be careful, pay attention. All right, so here we are at about a point where we're at roughly half the volume that we started with. It's time to turn this thing off. Boom, off. And the recipe calls for once it's cool, then filter it. Well, it's going to be a while before it cools off, folks. See you then. A not-so-short while later, boiling vinegar takes a while to cool off, along with the Brazil wood sawdust that has been bean boiled. This took about 20 more minutes to get to a safe handling temperature. All right, so here it is. The Brazil wood has cooled off. I can pick it up, handle it. Um, it still feels a little warm. Don't know if that's because it's been sitting out in the sun or if it's still warm inside, but either way, it's very safe to handle. Um, and so as you can see inside, it's red, it's got the dredges, so it's time to come out, pour it in here. So we're gonna take this beautiful hand-woven white linen and turn it red and turn it into a filter system. Have you tried actually putting the Brazil wood straight into the uh, cloth and basically infusing it so that you can then just pull that straight out? That's actually kind of what I'm gonna be doing. Um, also, it needs to be squeezed to get some stuff, to get the rest of the Brazil wood out. Um, however, this doesn't make a very, the way that this is formulated does not make a very good dye for um, dyeing fabric because it doesn't have the right stuff. It's an ink, not a dye. And if you try it, this will wash out of your stuff very quickly because it doesn't bind to the linen very well. I think more as an easy way to do it because it work we infuse these so you, you wrap it up into that so that as opposed to it sitting there in the water it's like essentially you're putting it into a tea bag and you're boiling the Brazil wood in your tea bag. Ah I hadn't thought of that I haven't done that um, with the recipe that we're doing um, I can see some problems that might come up with that with the alum. They want you to put the alum and the uh, gum arabic together. I didn't do that because it makes the bubble stronger and they really climb out the edge. Uh, you can add it later afterwards. Um, it's something to try. I haven't done it. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, just a note on the fabric, um, linen was what was used in period or cheesecloth was what was used in period. Either of those work just fine. Um, cheesecloth here in the United States, um, purchased at grocery stores and things like that, is not worth using. Um, cheesecloth that you purchase from a cheese shop, cheese making shop, or you get all your stools and stuff, uh, materials and supplies, that kind of cheesecloth is fine, uh, just so people don't make the mistake I once did. <laughs> All right, I'll continue on with the video. And the dredges have to come out because they need to get squeezed because they are also holding, of course sometimes they don't want to come out, they're also holding the Brazil wood. Oop. And they are soaked up and this is one of those one take things that no matter how ugly it gets we just kind of have to get through it so as you can see in the end there's not an awful lot of brazil wood uh, ink liquid in there well a lot of it's actually in the dredges so now we get to squeeze that out take it fold up the edges and the corners as you can see it's a gorgeous color and as you can see a lot of it is actually still cut in the dredges so we're just going to squeeze this. By the way, if you do this when it's too hot, it hurts. Don't do it when it's hot. It's not worth it. Yep, starting to get dribbled down my arm. 
I don't mind dribbling down my arm for me. I mind it dribbling down the arm because it doesn't get in the bowl. It needs to get in the bowl. Everything in the bowl gets turned into ink for you guys. Um, and then you can turn this and that will actually corkscrew down and help oh sorry get ink out or at least liquid out this will turn into ink in a bit when i add gum arabic and the other thing you can do like i said as this is starting to look more orange than red you can add a little bit of chalk to it mortar and pestle let's move it see what's inside it okay inside we have some white powder that white powder could be all sorts of things in this case it is ground up cuttlefish bone the recipe calls for uh, adding chalk if you want to make the brazil wood a little bit more red so i don't have any chalk well a period a sca time period substitute is cuttlefish bone in this case it's been ground up this however was not ground up by me this was ground up by my daughter, Squee. Good job, Squee. Hi, I'm Squee. And I am grounding up cuttlefish bones. And um, I really, really, really like this. We're going to add just a touch of... She actually gets upset when I don't have any for her to grind up. She does a very good job. She really does. Um, and it's one of the things, and I like using her, um, as an example, because honestly, sometimes people get afraid of things, and if a seven-year-old, eight-year-old girl can do it, I'm pretty sure most adults can. All right, back to the video. Of, well, not chalk, but um, we're gonna add a touch of cuttlefish bone that Squee already, that you already watched Squee work with and grind up. And really, you don't want much more than that. You know, if you, I don't know if you can see it or not. Remember. Calcium carbonate is a base, vinegar is an acid, and that actually does bubble a little bit. Um, so when you introduce that acid and that base together, it, it produces carbon dioxide. So you don't want to do that in a, in a bottle with a narrow uh, neck in it, because then it comes shooting out and it, like a volcano in those old experiments. That was a fun experience once. So. Um, we have what we have in the way of the Brazil wood. Uh, it looks like it is less, far less than uh, a pint, uh, which is often what happens. Um, I'm just going to pour some of these bottles. Um, I like this kind of funnel because it has the ridges on it, and that helps stop the vapor lock and lets the water, lets the water or vinegar or whatever you're using, in this case Brazil wood ink, flow through and allows air to come out at the same time. Uh, hopefully, uh, I won't miss too badly, but it wouldn't be the first time if I did. Oh yeah, that's looking gorgeous. And then I'm going to double check. Yep, a little drop. That happens. Double check it. And just a little bit more. Yeah, that was wrong. Okay. This is the recipe that I use to make the ink. Uh, it is from the Book of Secrets, Diverse Ways of Making Ink. Don't worry, I will give you a modern transliteration of this in just a bit. But let me read this to you. This is very typical of later uh, time period, 16th century, 17th century types of recipes. To seeth Brazil another way. To an ounce of Brazil, take a third part of a quart of beer, wine, or vinegar. Put it in a new pot. Let it stand a night. In the morning, set it on the fire and let it seethe till it be half consumed. Then, for every ounce of Brazil, take two penny worth of alum, beaten to a powder, and as much gum, and as much beaten gum Arabic, sit the well together, and let them seethe again. But, if you desire to have it somewhat dark, then scrape a little chalk into it. When it seetheth, let it not seethe over the pot. And being cold, strain it through a cloth, and put it in a glass well stopped. Here's the modern transliteration of the recipe. 
please understand that these uh, ingredients are listed in measurements of modern American measurements or the metric system. Uh, the measurements at the time period and place where this was translated into in England around 15, between 1590 and 1600 would not have been using these measurements or the same meaning of these measurements. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, that is a rabbit hole that is very interesting and complicated if you ever want to get into it. However, this recipe and these ingredients and these measurements and these modern way of doing things works just fine as you saw in the video. So let me read this to you so you have some time. This is Brazil wood ink red. The materials you're going to be using is one ounce of Brazil wood, 10 and two third fluid ounces, or 315 milliliters of vinegar. You could also use beer or wine, take your choice. Two penny weight, which is three grams of alum. Two penny weight, or three grams of gum arabic. Your tools that you're going to need are a non-reactive bowl. It says optional, but really you need one. Um, unless you have another non-reactive container that you can use, a non-reactive pot, a non-reactive stirring implement, a filtering cloth such as linen or cheesecloth is preferred. Coffee filters don't work. They're too slow, they overflow, they cause problems. They also filter out the gum arabic. That's bad. They also get clogged up by the gum arabic making it hard for the ink to flow through them. Just, just don't use them. Procedure. Put Brazil wood into a non-reactive container. Ian? That can be your pot, it can be the bowl. Yes. Yeah, so you've been asked, do you know how far back they were using Brazil wood ink? The question as I heard it is, um, when did we start using Brazil wood ink? How far back does it go? Yeah. I had research that I cannot find anymore at the moment um, that says for certain Brazil wood ink started to be used about 1200 AD. Um, I thought we had um, examples of Brazil wood ink going back before that to about 1000 AD. So at the moment, I will tell you definitively, yes, 1200, um, but perhaps a couple hundred years before that. Um, and rubrication really didn't, wasn't much of a thing uh, for a lot of that time period. They, they would paint and do other things. Um, red ink wasn't used when there was rubrication, it was more red paint until they had better red inks on average. Anything else? Well, whichever you want. Um, you understand. Go ahead. Okay, um, I was curious whether you had tried using wine um, instead of vinegar and if you did um, was it white or red wine or something else that be uh, um, um, I have not used alcohols to make Brazil wood ink yet um, and the reasons for that are several um, finding wines that don't have extra ingredients in them can be a little bit difficult. Um, anything that says fortified is bad. Um, it doesn't work for, uh, let me rephrase it, it doesn't work for the purposes of ink making. Fortified wines are great, um, but not for our purposes. Um, and then there's the other thing to think about that modernly made wines and alcohols are made using aseptic techniques. They kill off the germs, they kill off the microbes, and then they put in the one that or two that they want. This is not how it was done in the SCA time period. It wasn't even possible for them. They, they just lack the knowledge um, or the need uh, to do it. And so modern wines are going to get you a different result than wines that would have been made in the time period. Um, does that matter? The answer is it can. I have used um, vinegars that were made from uh, fruit juices um, and I, I got a different result. Um, and so I don't know if it matters for the alcohols or not. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Ian, when did you add the gum Arabic? I add the gum Arabic 
later in this video, as you won't see in the video at all. You can do it um, at the time that you're, you put in the alum, and they, which is when they say to do it. Um, I have put it, I, I put it in um, after it cools, um, and usually right before bottling it. And I skipped that step in the video, and I, and I actually um, explain that later uh, in the soundtrack. Um, and the reason, and, and I haven't found any difference in quality of the ink or any difference in the color of the ink adding it later. Um, and again, my preference on that is, is that when you throw it in with the alum, the alum drops the boiling temperature, increasing the bubbles. And then um, gum Arabic used to be used for chewing gum and you could blow bubbles with your chewing gum um, because it strengthens the bubble. And it does the same thing with the bubbles with the Brazilian ink. And so those bubbles don't pop and they just travel up to the top. And the first time that happened to me, it was really scary. And after that, I'm like, okay, I'll just pop them as they go. And then I went, wait, can't I put in the gum Arabic later? And I could. So that's what I do now. Thank you. You're welcome. You've had a question as to what is a non-reactive pot? I'm looking, you've used a camping pot there. That is a camping pot. Um, it, uh, for the purposes, for our purposes, a lot of people, you, you would think that um, a uh, stainless steel pot or it would be non-reactive. For our purposes, it is reactive. Um, the, the, the Brazilian is sensitive to iron and it will darken to uh, purple uh, because of that chemical interaction. Uh, I had that happen to me while I was writing. Um, actually, I had that happen to me while I was working on a laurel scroll for somebody. Yeah, um, worked it out. You, you can find it on my blog. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, I, I exclusively use um, ca uh, camping pots for this um, that are, you know, with, with a coating on them because every other, when I didn't, I got bad results. Now that does bring up the question though, is that that's not exactly a period thing. So if in period, they probably, would they have been using more that it's either, it is going to have been that color because they would have been using, in fact, not even stainless steel pots or would they have been using essentially like, um, doing like a bathing thing in that they've got a ceramic pot sitting over the hot water? Um, as far as I can tell, there, there's uh, no Ben Marie here. There's no uh, water um, bath that they're using of any kind. Um, what they would have used is um, a clay pot, um, not necessarily ceramic. Um, potters can tell you far more about the qualities and the different names than I can. Um, they, they could have used a copper pot. Copper pots were fairly common, but um, a little bit more expensive obviously. Um, would the clay pot have been glazed um, or unglazed? Um, I, it depends on the recipe. Um, the, the recipes I've looked at, the ones that do mention the kind of pot you use, um, not one has mentioned a copper pot, but it was known to be used and it was, it was fairly common. Um, and some say glazed pot, some say unglazed for the, the pottery. And that's would have been their non-reactive. Some of them specify a new pot that they knew that something left over could cause problems. Excellent questions. Any others? All right, I'll continue the video. As we're going to add vinegar to it, um, it's an acid. You don't. You, it needs to be non-reactive to the acid. All right. Add your vinegar, beer or wine, and let soak overnight, minimum of eight hours. Obviously, you can do it in the middle of the day if you want, but minimum of eight hours. In a well-ventilated area, after soaking overnight, pour your solution and Brazil wood into a non-reactive pot. Stainless steel, not really a non-reactive pot for our purposes. Using a high temperature, bring the solution to a gentle seething boil. Go ahead and turn your temperature down if you need to. Uh, just maintain it at a seething boil. Once at a seething boil, add the alum and gum arabic. Be careful not to let it boil over. You'll notice you never saw me add the gum arabic, not in the video. Um, I prefer to add the gum arabic at the end because I have found that the gum arabic makes the bubbles um, 
stronger and, sh and, and therefore uh, they don't pop as well and that means they climb up the edge of the pot really nicely. Um, I have found no difference between adding gum arabic later and adding gum arabic in the middle while it's hot. Um, do understand that if you add gum arabic when the solution is not warm it takes longer for the gum arabic to get soaked into the ink. So just keep that in mind. If you want to put it in while it's boiling, feel free. Just understand it's going to climb the side of your pot pretty well. Uh, reduce the volume by just over half. Uh, you want to boil it down. Um, I have learned to do it at just over half instead of two half. Um, you will get the same results, but you will get slightly more ink out of the process. Remove from heat and let cool. Strain it through a cloth and a non-reactive container. Squeeze the cloth to ensure as much liquid as possible is released. And then, of course, bottle it in an airtight container. Uh, and that is the recipe and the, and the modern transliteration for it. I hope this has been useful to you. And yes, feel free to use chalk. Uh, it'll make it a little bit darker. It won't be a bright red. It'll be a dark red. If you add too much chalk, it'll get over to purple. And because Brazilian is that acid base indicator, all you have to do to get it back to red is add a little bit of vinegar. It should be fine. Uh, you don't want to do that too much, obviously, but go ahead and make it happen. Uh, if you cannot get a hold of chalk, go ahead and use cuttlefish bone. Usually your local pet store will have it, especially if they have a section for birds. Go over to that section for birds. If you can't find it, just ask them for cuttlefish bone. They'll get it to you. It's cheap, it's easy, you grind it up and you use it. Well, that's the end of our video. I do hope that you have enjoyed it and that this has been uh, instructive and useful to you. And I really do hope that sometime you get a chance to make your own. Thank you very much. All right. So, um, as I'm flashing, there you go. Um, as you can see, what? Uh, Sorry, I'll learn how to do this better. Um, if you look in the my background, you'll see some rubrication there. Just now, the more examples of rubrication for you. All right. Um, yep, they may have used clay pots. Uh, yep, all that good stuff there. Um, so, um, do we have any questions at the moment? Because uh, the next thing I'm going to do is talk is show you some alternative recipes, some extra recipes. All right. I, don't um, see I, do, have, I do have one uh, one more question. Um, now, obviously, you're, you've done the research and you've said that the um, rubrication that we see today, a lot of that was via Brazil wood inks. Mm -hmm. So that means that this would not be um, one of those fugitive colors. So it should remain as bold for as in perpetuity for all we know. More or less. Um, a well-made Brazil wood ink uh, is not going to be fugitive on its, it's not going to be fugitive color. And there's a difference for those people who don't know, there's a difference between fugitive and light fast. Fugitive is, does the color fade on its own over time? Light fast is, does the color maintain, does the whatever it is, color maintain itself even though it's being bombarded by photons? And those two are very different. In a book that has remained closed all the time, it doesn't matter if the color is light fast or not. It's closed. Light's not getting to it very often. So, is it fugitive? The answer for Brazil wood is no, not really. Um, not by most measurements anyway. Um, Brazil wood happens to not be particularly light fast though. Um, tests that I have done show that it starts to fade after 15 days in a window. Um, and will fade almost completely after about 45 days. Thanks, because because one of the concerns I have is is using it on on dis scrolls that will be displayed in people's homes. Right, and and the answer is um, it, it depends on how they're going to display it. Um, I, I have I have been asked to make um, as as close to period perfect scrolls as possible, um, and I have told people, well, that means you're going to use Brazil wood for my red. Um, and it's not particularly light fast, so if you're going to do it, if you're going to display it, make sure it's not displayed in a light area. 
Um, one person didn't listen to me, displayed in the light area, um, along with all their other scrolls. Two years ago, it was still just as bright as before. So, you know, light fast tests stuck in a window is a different, different than what's going to be displayed on somebody's wall. And if that's what they request, that's what I'll provide them. I just warn them ahead of time. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, without other questions, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a couple other recipes, which means I get to share them. Yep. Thank you for letting me know. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. And can yes. you see? Yep. All right. And can you see the recipes? Oh, good. All right. Um, so over here is the, on the left, is uh, the Book of Secrets, Diverse Ways of Making Ink. We've already did that. We don't need to look at it anymore. Over here on the right, we have from the Art of Limning. Um, it's the Temper of Brazil Wood, and I don't know why it's so faded. Wow. Um, wherewith to write, flourish, or rule books. Um, and basically, this is... It, you know, this is the Brazil wood recipe that they would use for lining the book. And basically it says, take Brazil wood finely scraped um, or um, grossly beat to a powder and put there to the glaze of an egg um, or gum water. So egg white or, or, or gum water. Uh, take a little alum uh, that you've crushed up, made into a powder uh, and, let it, and let it steep the night and a day uh, and then strain out the liquor and keep it uh, to use as writing ink or as lining ink. Use it as you want. This is on my list of things to do. I haven't gotten to it yet. Um, I had hoped to have it done before uh, Gnome World Heraldic and Scribble, but it just didn't happen. Uh, but this seems like a really simple recipe. I mean, the last one I just did was super complicated. Um, lots of different things. Toss them together. This is throw them together, come back, at, you know, come back at 24 hours later. I'd love to try that recipe. All right. Um, they did know that you could use red to make blue bluer. And this gets into interesting things about and qualities about colors and refraction and reflection and, and how colors interact with one another and, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but this one specifically says, um, if you're blue, uh, so, so, so you take your azure, dry it in the shade, keep it in the vessel, um, keep it in a bladder of a purse of, of chamois leather. And then, and note, if it is not a good color or is inclined to paleness, boil Brazil wood, reduce to a powder, uh, in good lay or pure water, so um, lime lay, um, and then strain it through a cloth and put in a little um, alumin gemini or glasso alum uh, and mix your mix with your azure um, that's already been refined and this gives a good color and will increase its weight if we do this today it's it's a modern technique as well it's been around for hundreds of years um, and so uh, brazil wood is not it, it is is not a very opaque color and so it'll allow the light through but it'll refract it uh, and basically it filters out paleness and it will increase the blue when it comes out and it gets reflected back out. So, um, now the other, the other name for Brazil wood ink is Verzino. This opened up a lot of new recipes in my research, Verzino. And this is a recipe for um, using Brazil wood ink or make a paint instead of an ink and, and paint it on silver or write on silver. And so um, there's a lot of ways to modify your recipes to do for different things that you want to do. Um, we're coming up on 12 minutes out. Um, I'm pretty sure people would like to have a break um, and have about a 10 minute break for classes. So um, I'm done with my portion of things on this. However, happy to answer any questions that are left unresolved or any comments or things like that. I absolutely cannot hear you. 
We're uh, com- I had muted myself. We're actually coming up to lunch after this. So if you still had a little bit more to go through, we've got enough time. We've still got 10 minutes. So I, I'm game for chatting for 10 minutes about ink. Any, any ink questions or Brazil, what ink you have, I'm, I'm game. Um, I just don't want to bore people to death um, going over things that they can read on their own if they want. Did so you do give you us a link? Do you prefer powder or liquid gum Arabic? He asked if there was a link that was there. Um, in, the, in the chat, um, I uploaded my presentation, so you should be able to find it if you scroll up in the chat. Um, also, um, I did share this uh, as a PDF um, in the proceedings. Okay, do I prefer powdered gum Arabic or? Liquid gum Arabic. I prefer to make my own gum water, which means I'll take gum crystals, powder them up or not, um, throw them in water in the measurements and, and ratios that I want, depending on what I'm making, let that sit and turn into gum water for me. If you make your own gum water this way, um, you really should strain out the results, um, either through a metal um, sift um, or through fabric, uh, and that will get, as my, as, my, as my old apprentice sister put it, who's now Laurel, uh, it gets the nature out. Um, so the twigs, the bark, the insects, um, all the impurities that, that come with using gum crystals. Um, if you already have a gum powder, that's great. You don't need to strain it then. And how long do you let that sift has been added? Um, it really depends on how much I'm making and uh, what strength I'm making. Typically, I make an ounce, I put an ounce of gum crystals in, two ounces of water, I let it sit overnight, I stir it um, in the morning, um, and usually that's enough. Sometimes it's not, um, and then I just kind of keep stirring it until it's the liquid consistency that I want. I've never had the, uh, I've never had to take more than, than 12 hours. Um, However, if I'm going to make a lot, um, which I, I once made, how much? Eight ounces solid um, by weight, uh, and then 16 fluid ounces um, of water. That, that took a couple of days. <laughs> Have you actually ever tried the, using the gum Arabic to make the blue bluer? I have not tried, I have not used Brazil wood ink uh, to make blue bluer. Um, I mentioned this to somebody. Um, they said that their results were, wow, that does work. But they don't have pictures. They don't have measurements. Um, and so this is just one of those things that we know worked by color theory and light color theory. It should work. Um, I just don't have any proof yet myself. Because what I'm curious about is in that recipe that you had up there, it said to use, you could use water or the lime. And they're like two totally different sort of acidic levels. So Absolutely. That, that was um, what I was wondering. Because like, to me, that would seem that you would not actually, and I guess it could be that you're either going for a lilac or a maroon. So you, know, right. you, you, you want one or the yeah. other. It depends on what you're after. And the purple that you get with Brazil wood when it starts to go to purple can be a very nice purple, but it's always a deep purple. It's kind of a, I don't know how to describe it better than that. Um, in my case, when it was changing because it came in contact with my less than clean, perfect, you know, nib that, that I hadn't cleaned absolutely perfectly and gotten every molecule off of it, it turned so purple, I thought it was black. I had to put it under a stereoscope with a bright light and go, oh, that's purple. Okay, so now I know I have a chemical reaction going on and it's not, you know, some satanic influence because, you know, I'm a period scribe. Um, but yeah, no, I fought that thing tooth and nail for a while. Um, the, using the lye, you're going to get a base. It's going to make that more purple. It's just the way it is. Um, but the alum does weird things. And by the way, you can use alum instead of vinegar to make it more purple that becomes a very delicate balancing act. So unless you have money to waste, don't do it. <laughs> uh, did the friend of yours who did the Brazil wood to the blue, did they say what they used, whether it was the water or the, the lime? 
Um, or did they do both? They, well, they 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 used my basic my they used my basic Brazil wood ink that just the one that I taught you guys with, through the video today, um, and they just used that, okay. and it worked. Anyone else? Anyone else have any questions? And again, it, it doesn't have to just be about Brazil wood ink. I mean, if I've got five minutes to burn, I'll, I'll talk about any ink you want. Uh, question is, yeah. can they ask you about iron gall? Absolutely. What do you want to know? Genevieve, what, what do you want to know about, well, what's, what's the best way to clean nibs? I have a video for that, um, it's on my blog. Um, Honestly, the quick, easy way for, uh, okay. so people say iron gall ink is acidic, it's gonna eat your nibs. Yeah, water will eat your nibs if you leave it on. So always clean your nib. I don't care what ink you're using, just clean your nibs. I, I prefer to use um, a, a cheap toothbrush purchased at, uh, in the United States at what we call a dollar store, but wherever you can get a bargain tooth by, toothbrush, go ahead and use it. Um, Make sure you keep it separate from your other toothbrushes, not because I'm afraid you'll use it, but because your guests probably don't want to think you have a gum disease. Um, it's happened. But yeah, a toothbrush, I use soft soap, uh, liquid soap, um, a, a drop of that on the toothbrush, and then I brush, the, I brush the nib, rinse it off with water, and then I dry it because water on metal causes rust. It'll eat your nib. So always dry your nibs when you're done. My ink is lovely, but it turns your nib black. Would that be the iron gall ink that you're talking about there? And it is an ink and it is a dye, so um, it, it will turn things black. I have nibs that have been colored black, not completely turned black. Yep, yeah, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, um, I did um, <clears throat> talk, it's easier. Um, I didn't clean my nibs really well. I just have gotten really spoiled with using um, like the modern water-based ink and it was the first not modern ink I've ever used. So yep. I just what I always do and rinse it off in my little water and dried it really well and it looked clean and it plunked it back in my Scrabble box and when I opened it next it had turned that color. Yep. <laughs> yep. And this is a quill pen. But yeah, that's basically what it'll, you know, um, and it's not because it's acidic, it's because it's a dye. Um, and um, yeah, you just gotta clean them. Thank you. I will scrub better next time. Yeah, and the toothbrush is, is the best way as, that I found. It's what I was taught from the very beginning by my mm, Laurel at the time. That's its own complicated story. Um, just in case, um, it, it also does it to copper and, and um, yeah, copper alloy pens, which by the way are also period. So it's just what Iron Gull Ink does. Anybody else? Huh. No, I just saw the note um, about in the U.S. It's called butter muslin. Um, do I boil in a dedicated pot? Yes, I do. That pot only gets used for Brazil and ink. Anybody else? Any last questions? We've got two minutes to go. No, in that case, it looks like I'll wrap it up there. Ian, do you have any one last thing to say? Um, I am always available um, on Facebook. I am Ian, and then the next name, the next word, uh, the next half of my name is the Green altogether. You can always shoot me a, a private message. Um, I'm happy to answer questions. I, I got an email today uh, from a postdoc asking about ink stuff. I spent two and a half hours on it because of me. Um, I love talking about ink, so emails, whatever you want. Is your blog um, address in the notes that you've got for this? 
Um, I believe so, yes. Um, it's on the very last page of the slide presentation. Um, scribe scribbling, one word, scribe scribbling. All righty, well, at that, I'll say thank you very much for that, Ian. And yes, someone uh, mm -hmm. said thank you for an amazing class. So I'll second that. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Y'all have a wonderful time. Enjoy your.